I'm Kimberly Washburn, Curator of Education at the Florence County Museum. Welcome to November's Family Day at Home. Today we're going to be creating a mixed media artwork of a poppy field to celebrate Veterans Day. Veterans Day is celebrated on November 11th and is intended to um, honor and remember veterans for their service to our country. The poppy flower is an international symbol for veteran remembrance based on a poem called In Flanders Fields by poet John McRae, written in 1918. Please try to check out that poem if you have an opportunity. But today we're going to be making an artwork um, of a poppy field. So let's gather a few supplies and materials that we're going to need. You're going to need your lime green construction paper, your strip of light blue construction paper, your sheets of small red crepe paper, a cup of glue, some black plastic beads, green paint, and your paint swab. Some things you may wanna gather from around the house that will be useful are a pair of scissors and some paper towels. Okay, let's get started. The first materials we're going to use today are going to be our green construction paper. We're going to go ahead and paint our green construction paper um, as the background for our field. So I'm going to start by just laying that down on my paper. You may want to protect your table surface with some newspaper or scrap paper if you have it just to keep it from getting messy. This is green temper paint and I'm just going to dip my paint swab into my green paint and start creating a field. So I'm just going to add some grass and some kind of swooping motions to add grass. And they can be kind of large or it could be small, however much you would like. I like when my brush doesn't have much paint on it to come back and just kind of get some really light paint. I like the texture of not having much paint on my brush to create my painted field. So I'm just going to cover my entire sheet of paper just like this, continuing to add grass in my field or the stems of what will become your poppy flowers. So you're going to continue on doing that with your entire paper. I have one that's already finished just to speed things along for us today. So here's my completed field. I didn't do the very, very top because we're actually going to cut that off. So I didn't go all the way to the top. Now the next step is to allow our paper to dry because I did this one before we started filming. This one is all dry and ready to go. It usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes for this to dry. Temper paint dries very quickly. You're going to need to get your scissors and we're going to cut the top portion of this off in kind of a smooth rolling line that makes it seem like this is a soft hill. Um, we don't want sharp mountains, um, but just kind of soft rolling hills in the background. So I'm going to take my scissors and I'm just going to kind of cut and you can cut off some of the, um, some of the grass that you painted or you can leave it all. It's up to you. But I just kind of cut mine so it's not straight. I want it to look very natural like it's a hill. So you can see I just cut that portion off. And I can set this aside. I might want to use this for another art project. I could save it in my scrap pile to use for another project um, or I could toss it. So I'm going to set that aside. And the next step is to add the sky behind our grassy field. So I'm just going to glue this to my blue paper to create an area of sky and an area of field. So the easiest way for me to do that is to use my glue, my cup of glue, and my paint swab. Now I have a second one here, but you're going to need to wash your paint swab in order to have a nice clean one. You don't want your glue to turn green. 
So I'm just gonna use my paint swab and I'm going to dip it in the glue and just add glue to that back line. I don't want it to be really goopy because we don't want it to take a long time to dry. Doesn't take a lot, just takes a little. Okay. I'm just gonna put it along that line. And with my paper still face down, now I did put the glue along the back, not on the side with the paint. With the paper still face down, I'm going to put my blue paper right on top so that it's nice and straight and that I make sure that it covers that whole edge. So I don't wanna be able to see the table surface um, through this at all. I wanna make sure it's all covered. And there we go. Now, that should be nice and glued down. You could let it dry for a few moments if you need it to before you continue. Okay, so the next step is to add our poppy flowers. You can see in my example that our poppy flowers are kind of curled and so I'm going to show you now how to cut out these poppy flowers and how to create this nice soft texture in your poppy flowers. So I'm going to set this to the side because I don't need it right this second. And here I have my stack of red crepe paper. So I have about 10 sheets of crepe paper here. I like to divide this stack in half. Now we're gonna kind of cut a bunch of these at one time. You could cut them all individually, but that would take a very long time. So if you can stack them up and cut more than one at a time, that will speed up the process a little bit for you. It depends on how much you're comfortable cutting. You could try to cut through all 10 at once, but I like to cut through about half of them at a time. So about five at a time. I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna to try to kind of work in a circle, but sort of a wavy circle. I don't want it to be too circular because I want my flowers to look natural. I want them to look sort of variegated like the edges of a flower would look. Now, I'm not gonna make strong petals like maybe a daisy would have because poppy flowers are mostly circular. So what I'm gonna do is just come in here and start cutting out my whole stack all at once. And I'm kind of making my circle with wavy, a wavy line. Now, this is not a perfect circle and that is just fine. Okay, so that's kind of how it looks. Oh, I have one that's kind of hanging out there. Okay, so you can see it's sort of circular and the edge is a little bit irregular and that's just exactly what we want. I'm gonna do the same thing with my second stack. Try to make sure they're stacked up evenly as best I can. And again, I'm just cutting kind of in a circle with a wavy line. And I don't want this one to be exactly the same as my other ones, the stack I already cut. What I like about this is that every flower is unique in real life. And with this, it helps make each flower unique. If some of these papers get in your way, just cut off that stuff and keep cutting. Okay, almost back around. If the stack is too tricky to cut, again, you can certainly cut each one individually. All right, so here's my two stacks of crepe paper. I'm gonna get my trash out of the way. And I'm gonna show you how to take these flat pieces of paper and turn them into these nice, um, sort of cupped shapes that create a really um, realistic flower look. So what we're gonna do is take our crepe paper. Now crepe paper is a little bit different from tissue paper. It's got a lot of little creases in it. And when you stretch those out kind of with your thumb, I'm just kind of using my thumb to push down and sort of pull out all the creases of the crepe paper all the way to the edges. You gotta do this very gently because you don't wanna tear the crepe paper. You'll notice that you end up with something like that. So it's kind of curved. So you're just gonna go ahead and un sort of straighten out. It's funny that you kind of straighten out the paper to curve it, but you're gonna kind of pull all those wrinkles out of the crepe paper to create those nice curves. 
in your flower shape. So I'm going to keep doing that all the way around. And I'm going to do this to all of my flowers. I'm going to stop with four here. And each one will look a little bit different. The way that you pull it makes each flower look unique, even though you cut them in a stack. I'm going to set these to the side. For the purpose of this demonstration, I'm just going to do these four. Once you have all your flowers sort of sort of pulled out so that you've create, created this nice curve, you're going to start gluing them down to your paper. Now, I recommend going ahead and shaping every single one of your flowers before you start the gluing process. That way you'll know exactly how many flowers you have that you wanna use, and you'll know exactly how many dots of glue to put on your paper and where those dots of glue should go. So I'm gonna use my paint swab again and my glue, and all I'm gonna do is just dip it in the glue and make a few dots in the places I want. Now I'm just gluing down four flowers right now, so I'm gonna just make four dots you don't need a ton of glue, just one little dot will do. And then I'm just gonna set my, just the center of my flower onto that glue dot, just like this. And each one of those glue dots will get one of my flower shapes, just like that. Now, one final step to make these poppies really come to life is to add a black center. Poppy flowers are usually red. They can be other colors, but most commonly red, and they have nice dark black centers. And so we're gonna add that to the center using these little plastic beads. So I'm gonna get those ready on my table, and I'm gonna use my glue swab again and just put a dot of glue inside each one of my flowers. just like that. And then I'll just set one bead onto each dot of glue. Now you're gonna need to wait a few moments to pick it up while your glue dries. Don't go lifting it up right away or the beads might fall out. But once it dries, once you have all your flowers placed and once it dries, you'll have a beautiful field of poppies. Please make sure as you look at your poppy field that you take the time to thank a veteran for their service this Veterans Day. I hope you have a great day.